Hello! Today is April 29th, it's almost May, and we're here with just business. Just business all the time. <laughs> when you think of level one, you think it's just business. Just business. It's gonna be May. We're holding up, we're still in, uh, still in the old teen. It's like, I'm, I, I didn't get anything to drink, I'm completely out. The quarantine, as they say. Do you think, the uh... Down. Yeah, are the cat's still fighting. Look at him. He's here. He, he desperately wants to be on the chair, but I've been knocking him off of the chair. <laughs> well, first up, we've got a bit of news. Some places in the U.S. are starting to kind of sort of return to work. And the first thing is uh, Amazon has asked the workers staying at home, you got to return or you got to seek leave. When they started this, do they start this in March? Yeah, it's only been about three weeks for most Amazon people, and less like some warehouses have been in operation continuously. So I, when they started, I definitely wondered, it's like, how long are they going to let this go? Because this seems like too much of a disruption for their business model. But I don't know. Do you think it's any safer now? No. 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 And that's one of the things that he talks about is like, we're going to test every single Amazon employee and we're going to keep testing them. It's like when you get into the warehouse, we're going to test you. And by the end of the day, we're going to know if you're coming to work tomorrow or not. But nowhere can get, actually, you know what? If anyone can get tests, it's probably Jeff Bezos, but I'll, <laughs> well, they're I'll selling, that when I saw it. They're selling private tests now. So I bet he has earmarked a huge shipment. I don't think the private tests can work unless it's not the kind that require you to tickle your brain with a cotton swab. Because have you have oh. you seen the video like where they're like, oh, this is how it has to work? Yeah, and they shove it all the way up your nose. Way up in your nose. It's I like mean, it's you know the story like about the Egyptian recall. pharaohs. Yeah, where they just... like scoop out the brains with the spoon. Uh, ice picks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't. Well, maybe there'll be like a an Amazon employee there who just you know goes deep. I've got to go to the Amazon Fulfillment Center to pick up my my my, my home testing kit. I heard they've got there a hammer and a, and a swab. Let's, we're gonna hammer this in until it stops moving. Oh, well, you know the stories about the uh, how they search you on the way in and out. You know, remember the lawsuit about they have to get paid oh, for that. Oh yeah. So you show up to work, you get searched, you get a swab jammed up into your frontal lobe. <laughs> And then you go and you do your horrible warehouse job, and on the way out, you got to go through all that again. <laughs> you got, you're getting ready to go home for your shift, and you, you, you know, yell over at your socially distant, you know, coworker named Tom. It's like, hey, Tom, you know, ever since I was swabbed this morning, I've been seeing sounds, the same thing <laughs> happening to you. It's like, oh no, no, it's. Yeah, a little, little little casual brain damage here at the uh, here at the old warehouse. It's probably fine. That's just the gas they're pumping in to stop the sick leave. <laughs> <laughs> your brain's being stimulated, just like your bank account was. <laughs> Did you guys get your uh, your checks? Was your bank account stimulated? <laughs> no. <laughs> I said I didn't get one either. Uh... Apple and Google pledge to shut down coronavirus tracker when the pandemic ends. I wonder if you can say pandemic. Probably. I've well, just been said, saying the virus. You said the both words, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So this is the thing about the uh, the one that France is doing with the Bluetooth that reports back is worse in both ways. But you, can, you know France and Palantir are not going to turn theirs off. There's no, no. chance. Uh, but do you think Apple and Google are really going to do that? That is some juicy advertising data, as we have previously discussed. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, what do you think it'll be like Facebook? You remember Facebook was offering people money to use their VPN. They were paying people to be spied on. Perhaps, you know, it would be valuable enough to Google that they would pay um, for you to be spied on. But it, it it really becomes an impossible situation because if Google can identify you individually. And they have the thing, what if they hold like a search for ransom? It's like, oh, we're not going to let you search or use any Google services unless you, you we let you, or we can track you like this. You must let us do this. It's like, ooh. That would definitely be in violation of the CCPA, right? Yes. And GDPR. But only people in California could continue to enjoy the, the Googly services. 
Yeah, I would like to say that there would be a public backlash, but uh, I don't think there would be. No. no. No, definitely. I don't think there would be. Switching to technology news a little bit, we had a little bit of drama this week. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, WD sets the record straight, lists all drive that use slower shingled magnetic recording technology. So uh, it was first noticed, I think, on Reddit R data hoarders that somebody were buying the higher end WD red drives. Historically, red drives have been meant for NAS drives, but uh, the write performance was super lackluster and it was behaving weirdly in RAID arrays. Well, it turns out they had been sold shingled magnetic recording WD red drives and they were not marked as such. But I like how the, they're like, okay, let's set the record straight. And the table they released, the record is, yes, that's what you've been doing across the entire line. Yeah, yeah. Even it on the higher end. You. Like a WD black drive is shingled. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Well, I think that was the only one that was clean though, right? Or was it purple? Uh, purple. So the deal with shingled magnetic recording is that a lot of blocks have to be written like so if you want to change one block in the middle of a group of blocks that group of blocks has to be read in first then the one block in the middle changed and then the entire block written out you can't just change a block in the middle because the data is packed in so tightly that when you try to write to the middle it'll corrupt the data on either side and really what this is is this is this is one of the the four horsemen of the apocalypse for mechanical hard drives if you think about it, like, remember CRTs? It's like we're shooting a beam of electrons and we're steering it with an electromagnetic coil. And then those electrons are get converted to photons by this phosphorus-like material that we have on the inside of a glass tube. It is, you know, a wonderful Rube Goldberg machine in every way a liquid crystal device is a lot simpler, more difficult to manufacture, but a lot simpler. So we're talking about sand that we've etched with a laser versus this wonderful contraption of spinning powerful magnets and copper coils and the most precision engineered, you know, ferromagnetic platters on earth. And so which one do you think is gonna be less costly once we figure out how to mass produce sand? I have no thoughts. <laughs> So yeah, this is the end of this is the end of mechanical hard drives. The mechanical hard drives are only really good for insane densities that we have not yet been able to achieve on silicon in quantity. Oh, and it's not just Western Digital; it's also uh, Toshiba and uh, Seagate. I bet everybody's thankful that Western <laughs> Seagate and Toshiba are thankful that Western Digital draw most of the the public's ire but all three of them were doing it and they all three started doing it at roughly the same time which that that doesn't suggest collusion at all it's disappointing because the only reason you want those big drives anymore is for nas and stuff like that so you're almost always going to be using them in a group yeah it seems like uh maybe they just maybe they're not making money on that anymore and they want to destroy it as a group <laughs> yeah, probably true. It was mostly the smaller capacities, but um, you know, like WD the Red. Ones in the middle on some of them. Yeah, that, well, and WD Red is specifically meant for twenty four seven operation. Because remember, like WD Green is like, oh, this hard drive is only really meant to be on eight hours a day, and it's like, well, that was disappointing. But it's like, I mean, all right, fine, it is less expensive. And now, you know, even the even the 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 you know the drives meant for twenty four seven operation. It's like mm, this is not a good use case for a NAS unless you never rewrite the data. Yeah. Our next story it makes sense kind of. Instacart hired three hundred thousand workers in a month. It plans to hire two hundred fifty thousand more. Turns out that with this thing that we have going on if you had a really good online shopping experience for buying groceries and crap like that you're doing insane business jeff bezos is 23 billion dollars richer because they are amazon is literally at capacity they can't handle any more online orders it's just nuts so instacart you know services like that services like amazon where they do everything for you or as much as possible for you uh it makes sense that those businesses are record growth right now because where else are you going to get your milk and eggs but Instacart just goes to a local grocer and picks up your order, right? Yeah. Isn't that 
way more of a risk. I guess if you're reducing the overall number of people, it wouldn't be. But then you've got one person who's continually going into the danger zone and then going to individual addresses. Yeah, if it's anything like uh, like the office deliveries have been, they've been basically just leaving things on the on the porch. They're like, oh, you're you're at the office. Here, I'm just going to leave this on the porch. And they've been really keeping their distance. I saw that uh, Pizza Hut is advertising something called zero contact delivery on their site. <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess they just leave it, you know, outside or something. Interesting. It's like your, your pizza will buzz until you pick it up. That's neat. The other interesting thing about this Instacart thing, and something that drives me crazy about modern online ordering because you know we're not using cash, you pre-tip, which is the stupidest thing in the world. You but can you can revoke it, your tip with Instacart. Well, and that's what these people are doing. Yeah, and, that, and that, what a nasty thing to do because I guess you can pick and choose which order you want to take. So they scalp the best tips, but then the people game that by removing the tip later. Yeah, that's disappointing. That would probably make me rage. I think that would probably only work once or twice. Like in an area like ours, you figure there's probably only like a hundred delivery drivers and it would probably only take you a couple of months to go through all of them. And they'll be like, I remember that address. They stiffed me on a tip. Yeah. yeah. You're getting broken eggs after that first one. <laughs> or you're just not getting your stuff delivered. You have to wait. <laughs> Even just doing like pickup, grocery pickup, you usually have to wait a few days around here and we don't live in a very high population density area. Well, it's not normal circumstances though. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a segue for the next story, but TechCrunch says that Elon Musk is Starlink, says Starlink internet private beta to begin in roughly three months and public beta in six. So you're eligible for the beta if you're in northern latitudes. So that's like Canada, northern United States. Uh, they asked about Germany and he said, uh, maybe Germany, yeah, maybe, possibly. So they've been launching starlink satellites they've got enough of a constellation that they can keep you continuously connected these are low earth orbit internet providing satellites so the satellite that your earthbound equipment is connected to changes depending on the time so it's just sort of a continuous connection there's not enough in the constellation to provide continuous connection in like the southern united states there will be in about a year but for right now not so much so one of the areas that really needed good internet connection it's like ah, just don't worry about them I'm sure a lot of those mountainous places in the upper latitudes. Canada certainly has plenty yeah. of places that I'm sure get terrible internet. <laughs> Can you imagine if the Yukon becomes a desirable place for people to live because low population density, you can get everything you need delivered and you've got amazing internet access? You know what it's going to be really great for is those uh, Alaskan homesteaders on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> oh, we could become those people if we could get decent internet. I'm not sure we could. I don't think we have the skills required. Yeah, yeah I'm not ready to be that level of off grid. <laughs> so everybody thinks that uh, the economy is going to go back to normal just as soon as everybody goes back to work. But mm. then there's stories like this that make me think maybe not so much. Uh, CNBC says that Google is going to cut, or Google has announced that it has cut its marketing budgets by as much as half and the directors have been warned of hiring freezes. So Google is tightening its belt. But Google, you would argue, is benefiting from all of this. Yes. So oh, for sure, yeah. A business who is, you know, like really doing well is still taking precautions. That's a little scary. Well, I mean, you have to think too though, like for Google, do they really need that much marketing at this point? Yeah. Like I can see why they might cut it even even if it's this not, we're not talking about you know like the people using google search we're talking about people using like ads and stuff yeah but still so yeah they're trying to convince people it's like hey look how much more traffic we can bring to you because we've had customers who are skeptical of adwords it's like what is this really going to do for me yeah, yeah. Or, or hiring people to help manage those accounts or, or yeah. whatever but i think it's also a, a deeper reflection in that Google needs less people supporting the people buying ads from them because let's face it most agencies don't have any idea what they're doing so when they go to Google and they buy millions of dollars of ads Google has to help them spend the money a little bit but if the if no one is buying the ads Google doesn't need the staff to support that you got to teach them how to target the pseudoscience people 
Because <laughs> they're not going to think about that. I've taken that category out now. How are we going to sell it? That's Facebook. <laughs> I bet Google's got one. I'm How sure they gonna, do. Well, that's your tech support call. You call Google up and it's like, all right, I've got a product. It's called Goop. What uh, what categories do you think that I should uh, target with uh, with my product? Homeopathy enthusiasts. That's the <laughs> people with more money than sense. I think a lot of those people don't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> Bloomberg. Another Bloomberg article. Apple aims to sell Macs with its own chips starting in 2021. The new processors will be based on the iPhone designs, replacing Intel, and the transitions will be gradual and start with less powerful computers. So I think Apple is making a, a big mistake here. But one way that this could work is if they have systems that have both the ARM and the Intel CPU. Because the, the CPUs that are in like the iPad, uh, which is the kind they're talking about here, don't use very much power at all. So if you want to be able to run iPad apps natively on like an Apple laptop, you can just throw that in there. It doesn't really cost much. It doesn't really make the system more complicated. It doesn't really eat that much power. And that would be a great transition laptop. If they all of a sudden switch, probably not in for the best user experience. Yeah, but they're only going to do the bottom of the lineup. So how many of those people are just email and web browser anyway. Mm. They could definitely get away with it. We'll see. We'll see how the iPad, the iPad with the keyboard and mouse attachment is doing really well. Um, so it's really just a, a question of like what the software experience is and what the operating system is. Because at the very low end, I would think it's just an iPad. Like you don't even have Mac OS at that point. It's just straight up iPad or iPad with a keyboard. They got to fix the file browser before it can be really useful, I think. But No, you just use the cloud, Krista. The, the file browsers are... <sighs> that's, that's for losers. Uh, so annoying. <laughs> uh, we do have one Zoom story this week. Uh, so, you know, there's that. Which is, despite all the problems that we've covered over the last several weeks, Zoom daily users has surged to 300 million despite the privacy woes. Literally, no one cares. There's everyone is so desperate for human contact that they just don't. It's like we're, this is being sold to like East African warlords. It's like uh, it's probably fine. I can't I, wait for the Eastern Kentucky warlords. We had to do a Zoom call this week, and I was kind of surprised. It's like, wow, these guys don't read the headlines, do they? <laughs> wait, who did you have to do? Well, I can't. I mean, I can't. You can't tell me, but for who's the, asking uh, you to do Zoom? The one, the thing that's going away. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. Nine to five. They didn't want to use Teams. <laughs> See, the problem with Teams is it doesn't have like the the light. The, the whole reason that Zoom is successful is you click the link and you're in the meeting. There's no, there's not. No scheduling and outlook. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, but it's just not. I don't know. I don't know. 9 to 5 Google reports that the Motorola Edge and the Edge Plus go official as the company's first flagships in years. I think flagships should be quote in quotation marks here because haven't they announced that these are not going to be the, the highest end processors and the highest end camera setup? It's high end, but not not insane like what Samsung's doing. Well, nobody's buying that. The really high end processor from Qualcomm. I think you can go higher, but this is, you know, it's the best one that Motorola is going to give you. Verizon is carrying the Motorola Edge Plus exclusively starting on May 14th. The phone will cost $1,000 on the carrier site for $41.66 a month. You think it does are... seem like a crowded market. Yeah, so is anyone really buying phones right now? Uh, there's like 30 million people that are definitely not buying phones right now. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if, you're, if your phone is garbage and your battery sucks right now and you're trying to survive oh, just with a phone, you're probably dying for a new phone. Plus, a lot of irresponsible people have $1,200. <laughs> That's true. What kind of phone can I get for... There's a... You know, the Samsung... I think it's the Samsung A320? 3, 320, 360, something like that. It's basically a Galaxy S8. Um, with a little bit worse screen and they tweaked the battery and that phone is like $250 so that is a I mean a Galaxy S8 for $250 given that they're not doing the the massive upgrade and it's a brand new battery I mean that's a brand new phone 
That seems like a really good deal. They also had the Pixel 3 for $200 last week. So if you're desperate for a phone, do that. Don't do this. Might be some inventory build up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of people abandoning things, or maybe uh, maybe the, the economy is bringing the financial something into focus, AT&T has lost another 900,000 subscribers. I love these stories because we predicted it. Like, we called it. It's so obvious. So that's a million a year, or no, three million a year average. They've got 18 million left. <laughs> what do you think the tipping point is when it just like goes away? Because it's, it's going to accelerate. It's going to snowball. I think we've already crossed the, the tipping point financially. Like it's unrecoverable. Like the investment that AT and T had to acquire these subscribers and the Direct TV investment. I think it's all right down at this point. Meanwhile, uh, did we do the? Was there a Netflix story? Probably not, because I don't see it here. Hmm. My Netflix gained incredible numbers yeah that makes sense they like blew it out of the water <laughs> so i think a lot of people were stuck at home and it was people who you know like they might watch one or two tv show a week and they watch the news and they watch sports and all of a sudden there's no sports and all of a sudden they have all this time to kill and they're looking at the tv and they're like this is garbage yeah let's just switch let's just get, <laughs> let's let's get rid of everything now at t did actually re- report s- uh, subscriber growth in their fiber optics that was the only place they had subscriber growth but they lost so many customers on dsl that it didn't make up for the gains that they had on fiber and the dude from at&t his quote is hilarious it's literally we're losing so many customers on dsl because other options are moving into those areas and people are switching immediately other options that aren't from the 90s <laughs> yeah maybe it's time to upgrade some of our stuff so we can compete nah nah but let's he, not do that another statement he made is they're just doubling down they're like nah we're not gonna lower prices because he didn't say this but he, the unspoken thing here is like yeah this is old technology we're just gonna let it die we're just gonna raise prices to try to offset it. <laughs> They said that before. They're in a death spiral. I mean, that, that will only accelerate the rate at which people leave the platform. That just seems that just seems nuts. Uh, CNBC also, the New York Attorney General opens an inquiry into Charter Communications' response to the thing after hundreds reportedly catch the thing. So this is field service technicians, but also their call centers. Their call centers, apparently, they were like, nope, we can't shut down. No, you're packed in like sardines. We're not going to give you face masks. We're not going to give you anything. You just need to keep working. And a lot of people got sick. Did you see the his statement at the bottom? It was like, yeah, most of you have to be here because you can't do your jobs from home. Meanwhile, the people were like, but look at these other companies doing the job from home. But then another statement, he was like, and some of you, I understand, can do your jobs from home, but that's not how we want you to do it. <laughs> I really appreciate if you can. Yeah. Also, you're putting one. yourself at risk. Uh, yeah. I'd say that I'd say New York's the New York State will investigate and they will find the ever living bejesus out of them. But I could be wrong. You missed uh, Magic Leap. Yeah. Oh, the Magic Leap. Oh no. Okay. Magic Leap has cut half of its jobs and major restructuring. This is again like another story from Captain Obvious. They're going to focus on commercial customers now. That's it. Just commercial. Uh, maybe, oh, you know buddy. what? If they could figure out how to put thermal imaging on those, maybe. <laughs> maybe they'll have a short future. <laughs> it's like, just look at this. It's like, oh, all of my enemies are colored in red. Okay. But yeah, I I don't understand. Do you think the, the board, the people at Magic Leap, do you think they actually think it's going to work? Or are they just trying to get as, just milk as much money as they can from it in salary? I think that they want to do as much as they possibly can because they realize that they may have created a Theranos-type situation. And they want to try to make it look as legit as possible before going full Theranos. That's <laughs> just me, lawsuits? Though. Yeah, it's like, you know, the investor dollars. And it's like, you know, it's like we may have overstated what it was capable of. And, you know, some For the documentary like filmmakers who will get rich <laughs> off of the project after. <laughs> The investors are looking around. And it's like, oh man, have we been Theranos? It's like, no, no, they're still, they're still operating. There's still a chance. It's like, no, they're done. 
I don't, I don't really understand our next story. It's from The Verge. The headline is, NVIDIA's GeForce Now will lose access to titles from Xbox Game Studios and Warner Brothers. And also, Don't Starve and other stuff from Klee? Clay? Clay? I actually don't know how you pronounce that. It's K-L-E-I. It's Don't Starve and Something Something Ninja. Uh, oxygen Not Included. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't get why these companies don't like having their games available on a streaming service. It's because of Stadia. Because with NVIDIA, you don't buy the game again. But with Stadia, you don't, you just stream your NVIDIA one from your Steam account. But with Stadia, you have to buy the game again. So they don't want you to get free access to that game you bought. It seems like it's my game and I will do with it as I please. Yeah, well, NVIDIA and all those companies disagree. <laughs> well, but the thing NVIDIA. is, they let, you, they let you have all these games in the beta. It's, uh, it's Xbox Game Studios and Warner Brothers. NVIDIA is saying, yeah, we can stream your game, but in Xbox Game Studios and Warner Brothers are saying no. No, but NVIDIA could just say, you know what, screw them. We're going to let you do what you want. They're afraid of getting sued. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't really need their permission. Like you say, it's your game. Why couldn't you stream it? But you can with Steam Game Home streaming. streaming. I wonder what kind of letters that Gabe has gotten because the Steam streaming app is really good. Cool. And remember, it was like kind of problematic for a while on iPads, but it's pretty good on iPads now, uh, from what I understand. And it just streams from your home computer playing the game to like your iPad or whatever. I wonder if uh, Valve has gotten any angry grams. I don't know. I mean, it probably depends on whether or not your loss from being kicked off of Steam would be way worse than any possible gains. <laughs> like you're, gonna, you're not going to let somebody who bought your game stream it to another device? Like, what sort of, like, I mean, that's just draconian control for no reason. Well, well I mean, listen, Nintendo Switch is basically just another online store at this point and all those indie games are on there but you gotta buy them again <laughs> that's that's not acceptable i've only I bought, the, only game, the only game that i bought multiple times is uh final fantasy 2 for the snes and that was just because it was like five bucks it was like well the original version wasn't five bucks but then it was like i want to replay that and then it was like okay i guess i'll have to buy it again Whatever. Remember that Nintendo still charges like five dollars for Super Mario Brothers. That's crazy. It's probably that's a license to print money. It's just the ROM. It's one of the pirated ROMs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those bastards! Well, Whole Foods is tracking unionization risk with a heat map. What could be insidious about that? This was amazing, and then like the three point prong plan they have here for tracking that and figuring out like it was crazy stuff like how close are you to the nearest union how happy are your employees how much money do they make it, the money one was like a weird inverse like uh the less or is it the more money you make the more likely you are to unionize yeah it doesn't make any sense it's weird I don't know. you gotta think though like ads. what do you think the annual cost of anti-union efforts is for the Amazon umbrella. Versus the cost of paying for the union? Yeah. Probably a tiny fraction of the cost of paying for the union. I guess. I wonder if you just put that into their salaries, would that help stave off unions better? <laughs> it only takes one person in the union to get brain cancer to completely wreck everybody else's premium. Which is not something you should... Like, that shouldn't be a thing that should ever be said, but is a thing, actually, apparently. Yeah, you're screwed either way. But it is interesting how far they'll go. Also, what a, what a crazy job to have. You know, like, jobs that'll just crush your soul. <laughs> if you're the guy who's designing the anti-union, you know, <laughs> program. That's got to be one click above the Facebook content filter. <laughs> well, at least they can say they're doing something good for the world. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of doing good for the world, China has rolled out a pilot test of digital currency. China's central bank has introduced a homegrown digital currency 
and it's running out it's running internal tests across Shenzhen, Chengdu, and Xiongan. I don't think I got that right. That's a satellite of Beijing, so it's part of Beijing basically. Um, yeah, so this is going to be used by the central bank for just tracking payments. So you know, don't don't get your your knickers in a twist. It's not really cryptocurrency. It's really just a transaction tracking service for tracking transactions handled in regular local currency. But they could turn it off. And what they don't talk about in this story, which is interesting, uh, they left that out, is this will absolutely be part of your social score. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, oh, your social score has dipped below this amount. You can no longer buy alcohol till you get it back up. Or you can't have to buy the bus. <laughs> what was huh. that? These cats are losing their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Did you give them too much catnip? No, this is just how it is all the time. <laughs> no, it's greenies they all fight over. Oh, yeah, they love the greenies. <laughs> I got a I got a box that I cut a hole out of for them to you know like to run it out of, but it's too I cut the hole too small for Toads. He's too fat. So what you're hearing is when he manages to like walk it to a wall and brace it to stuff himself in there, and then he bolts out of it. He carries it around like a shell, and you're hearing him drag it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I could segue from that to our next story, which is about the Surface Go 2, which is apparently imminently going to be released in, in May sometime. It's got a larger 10.5 inch display and thinner bezels. It's got a four gigabyte, 64 gig version, which I think is a crime against humanity, and an eight gig, 128 gig version, which is also, I mean, I know they got to cut costs, but come on, one terabyte of flash is only like $90 these days, 128 gigs, by the time you get Windows 10 installed, you've got like three gigs left. And I don't even know how they're doing it on the 64 gig version. I would love to uh, get one of those four gig versions and just test how many Chrome tabs we could operate in that thing. It'd be 0 0.5. <laughs> yeah, I included that story uh, without reading it first. And as I was reading it, I was like, yeah, this is really underwhelming. Yeah. And then 64 gigs is not even an SSD. It's an EMMC is like a soldered on multimedia card so it's slow and crappy <sighs> the more expensive one is uh based around the core m3 8100y so maybe it's not terrible but 128 gig ssd come on come on really come on you gotta use the one drive buddy <laughs> Uh, rumor has it they'll also have an LTE option, so you can have an always-on internet connectivity. Maybe that's okay. Uh, on our last story, and this story should not surprise any of you at all, because we literally said this was going to happen, T-Mobile confirms it's going to brick 5G on most Sprint 5G phones post-merger. The one phone that 5G will continue to work on, that's the Galaxy S20. If you don't have a Galaxy S20, it's time to get a Galaxy S20, because that's the only phone they're going to support for the uh, legacy customers i guess or else the only phone they're going to support for 5g for the legacy customers so I, this really is a microcosm of the whole 5g uh bait and switch or uh, falsehood fiction <laughs> because they're talking about it's like oh well one company used this kind of 5g but that wasn't the same kind of 5g as this 5g and these phones don't have this piece that you're going to need for this new 5G. And it's just like, well, it wasn't this supposed to be a standard? Shouldn't we agree on these things? <laughs> well, shouldn't we agree on these things before we start rolling out the technology? And yeah. And the hilarious thing is that they do use the same spectrum. So the wireless spectrum will be divided up and used in a different way. So when when T-Mobile takes down these Sprint 5G networks, it's going to reuse the spectrum. It just can't use the same equipment to talk on that spectrum because of those incompatibilities. But they will give you a nice little discount on your S20. So uh, upgrade like a good consumer. The best discount that I saw in there was uh, if you bought one of those micro cell towers because you know your service kind of sucked, 
and you bought it from Sprint, if you paid outright for it, they'll give you $300 to buy it back, which actually seems kind of fair. Although I think new, they cost around seven, eight hundred. So eh, that's not, maybe not the best. Oh, I've lost my headphone. Well, that's, that's it for the news for today. Friday, we've got a lot of nonsense and robot. And design? the best category. We got one design story. Best right best category is nonsense. Yeah, nonsense is really robot really we've got one robot story that's gonna be the bridge from robot to nonsense. It's pretty great. We'll see you Friday. Bye.